So on behalf of the Department of Language and Literacy Education and the Faculty of Education, I'd like to welcome you to UBC today. Thank you. I'd like to um, ask you a little bit about what you're working on and, and uh, what you're going to talk about today. The recent book, uh, Life at the Intersection, Community, Class and Schooling, <clears throat> which is, it was published about less than a year ago actually, and it, it attempts to look at the experiences of young people and schooling in a neighborhood in Toronto which is considered to be seen as a bad neighborhood. What I try to do to contextualize this is to show that in most urban cities there are, or urban areas, there are communities that are seen as bad. And I took a look at the number of cities in Canada where certain areas are considered bad and try to, to see why Jane Finch in Toronto is seen as one of the worst in the Canadian context. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the range of topics that you've studied and, and how they link together. I, I started off doing work on black youth in Toronto uh, and then I was very keen on the educational career aspirations of black youth. And I moved looking more at marginalized youth and racial minor minority youth. At that time, I, as a youth worker, I worked in a marginalized community. And so I was very keen on the issues of those youth. Then I moved uh, slightly from just looking at the educational aspirations to look at what happens in employment. And interestingly enough, I was able to follow those youth over the period of, say, 20 or 30 years, revisiting them, and notice how that trajectory has happened for, for them. Paying attention to not only the young people, what's going on, but paying attention to what happens in the employment situation. And, and so I'm constantly interested in the, ex the working experiences of marginalized people. So, Right now, I'm involved in a project where I'm looking at the experience of racialized faculty in university. And also, I'm also keen, maintaining my interest in youth, looking at youth who are living in suburban areas in, in uh, Toronto again. Having that idea of working with immigrant youth and, what, and racialized immigrant youth, what their experiences are. And also notice that immigrants tend to immigrate to a society with the idea of making it. Noting that many of these youth that I'm interested in and have met at university have ha lived with parents who want to make it and think they're making it and think making it means moving to the suburbs. And so I'm, I'm saying, what's the implication of that? moving to the suburbs, when in many cases these parents really have not had the economic wherewithal in order to live in the suburbs. So I'm, I'm very curious about that, so I'm doing some work around that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you mentioned making it, and uh, you know I like the titles of some of your books, like Race and Play, um, Seeing Ourselves. Would you, would you like to talk about uh, any of those uh, books? Yeah, one, one of the ones that uh, making it, it, of course, came out of the, the work I did with young people. And seeing ourselves was my attempt to grapple with the whole idea of this multicultural context uh, we call Canada and to understand what does it mean for people to live in this culturally diverse society. And so seeing ourselves is an attempt to, for me to push us to see ourselves, uh, to see the extent to which is multiculturalism working as we perceive it to be working? Is uh, what, what about the issues of race and ethnicity? Uh, do uh, some people are seen as Canadians and others aren't seen as Canadians? When does a person uh, become a Canadian? So, so that was the, the attempt to, uh, in that work of seeing ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And race and play? Oh yes, one of the big things I'm very interested in is the, the sporting lives of youth. I'm very interested in the contradictory nature sometimes of sports, especially racialized youth and black youth in particular, who see sports as a way of making it, of 
of being able to attain the educational goals. And especially in Toronto, many of these youth think that getting a sports scholarship to an American university would, mean, would uh, achieve them that ultimate uh, work in uh, playing for the NBA. And so I'm very curious. So I looked at uh, Racing Play is an attempt to look at uh, what happens in that. And it was a, an attempt to say that race matters in the whole idea of the sporting and sporting careers of young people. Mm, interesting. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of things that we're grappling with at UBC that uh, you have written about and think about. And one of them is um, you've written about equity policies in universities and anti-racist policies. Do you have any thoughts about what, what you've found in your research? Uh, yes, that research is still going on, but I, I'm very keen on the whole equity policies, especially when we look at the affirmative action or employment equity policies that universities put out and employment uh, business and businesses put out, where they where they say uh, we welcome all uh, all uh, applicants, particularly women, racial minorities, people with disability, gay, lesbians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is it, my question is, is, is it just a nice way of saying we are open and we are ready and we are very accommodating of diversity or when people go in, do they get that accommodation necessary that take, take these identities that they bring into account? Mm -hmm. So um, I always think of the, uh, the idea, I have a paper written called The Paradox of the Welcome, the idea that people brought in, invited in, but but that's that's the extent extent of it. What about them making it in this in, into administration, making it into the uh, the in more influential positions of the universities or or, or employment? So that's all. So I see that as part of the whole importance of equity. You know, equity requires and equity demands that we. We not only invite people in, but make sure that the context in which, into which they move is accommodating of their identities, their experiences, and provide opportunities that enable them to function effectively. You just don't come into an uh, institution and become, uh, you, first of all, the institution is not culturally neutral. So, People in that institution must re remember and pay attention to what are some of the issues in that institution, what are the cultural norms, values in that institution, how accommodated are those cultural norms and values of that institution to people who are different. Mm -hmm. And also understand that difference is going to be seen as a social construct when they enter into that. And therefore, making those possibilities. So when you say, we welcome all those people, you're going to say, you don't expect those uh, identities to be dissolved once they get in. How are you going to accommodate those identities? That's one of the important questions for me. Very interesting. I'd also like to ask you about the notion of community engagement. We're having a lot of discussions in the Faculty of Education about community engagement and what that means and what that looks like. And <clears throat> for example, your work in uh, Jane Finch has been over a long period of time. Do you have any thoughts about um, how that can be understood and maybe some of the um, contradictions and challenges uh, of community engagement? Yeah, I'm never quite sure what uh, universities mean by community engagement. And I think universities grapple with this community engagement. And, and in some cases, I know institutions go out and and do some of what might be considered social service kinds of activities. But universities in the business of education, so therefore don't go out and be social service uh, agencies. What we need to do is connect with social service agencies, connect with communities, and work with these communities and social service agencies to respond to, and if you're in uh, uh, education, to look at the education opportunities that's being provided and how you might, as an institution, enhance those educational opportunities for those students. And therefore, we should, as in, if we're going to engage, be engaged with the community, we should see education is connected to other institutional 
uh, factors such as social service agencies, social service, uh, and, and the justice system and all those kind of things. So if we're going to be engaged in the, in the community, we should give attention to and make relationships with these different institutions. And some people call it the wraparound kind of thing, where you give attention to the, all the intervening uh, institutions that have an impact on students' lives. Therefore, we work with that. The other thing I, I think as a community-engaged university or community-engaged faculties should also be interested in doing research with communities. Our research should be activist-oriented research, not research just for research's sake, but research that will make a difference to enable the possibilities for those young people to bring into, into, into vision some of those possibilities and opportunities that we might offer as an institution, if, we, if that's necessary for us, that they might be able to see in the institution. It's also to be removed from the neoliberal kind of approach where it's so very, so harshly individualistic, where we start thinking of the collective is absolutely important. And to have students think and young people think that it's not that you failed sometimes, but the institutions are failing you at times. And therefore, if we as an engaged university can also engage in a discourse that make communities and people in communities think differently and not necessarily to dump on them. And, and interestingly enough, we tend to be engaged in marginalized communities. And I don't know if we enhance the situation of the marginalized communities, if we reinforce the individualistic, uh, you, are, you are the problem and not, and not the institution. If you're not making it, it's because of you. And so therefore, if we're going to be engaged, we're going to have to provide some kind of a discourse where people can see possibilities. And also provide, and uh, the term I heard recently was enable them to see that the university and our work with the community can help to scaffold people into where they want to go eventually. You, there's kind of a conundrum when you work in a community like Jane Finch for a long time, 15, maybe more years. It has a particular kind of reputation. Um, you've built relationships with people. What are some of the challenges about then now writing about these, uh, mm -hmm. these issues and communities? And at one and the same time, you've created very uh, important relationships that you want to honor with the people you work with. Yes. And that gets back to the idea of being an engaged mm -hmm. researcher, engaged person, engaged faculty member, a friend of that community. I cannot go in thinking that I'm not influenced by the institution. With, uh, Of course, uh, when I go in, I'm, I'm very much aware that as a faculty member at the university, there are certain obligations and expectations. Uh, it's interesting that, <clears throat> that we as faculty members like the idea of research, like the idea of writing. And I did say earlier just uh, about engaged <clears throat> faculty member inviting and working with, with communities in, in terms of research and writing, but is that what the community wants, mm -hmm. really? Uh, should we really be all about writing and researching, and <clears throat> or do they want other things? And are we willing and prepared to do those other things? I feel strongly, though, that research can be one of the activist tools for community. And so I, I would promote that as... So, <clears throat> so when I started working with the Jane and Finch, one of the issues for me was to understand the discourse of the community. And one of the things that I liked when I worked with young people there is they saw the community not only as it is perceived, but how they turned that perception of the bad community into something that they're going to challenge, something that will motivate them, make it possible for them to be able to be successful if they want, and use it in their own sense of, of setting up their, their uh, aspirations. <clears throat> in, in doing that, I was very struck when I did a research on black young people in Toronto generally, and black young people in Jane Finch. The black young people in Toronto generally wanted to do well because they felt they want to be uh, uh, 
They want to show that black people can be successful. They want to sh turn the stereotype on its head. For, people, for the black youth in Jane and Finch, they wanted to do that too. But one of the motivating factors was the fact that they lived in that community. So they're coming to construct an aspiration that would be for them to be successful was also informed by the geographic community or the neighborhood in which they lived. So knowing all that, I think that kind of message needs to, needs to get out. But beyond that, too, am I the person to do so? And I, I always wondered to, about doing this, this research or writing this on my own. I, this was never the intention. It was not supposed to be a book that I was going to write on my own. I, I had connected with a young student that I'd worked with and who was now and lived in the community, grew up in the community, now teaching in the community, and I wanted to write it with her. But family matters came in the way, and so she was not able to do it. But there were certain parts that she, she assisted with. And, and so I also think working with community also means collaborating with community members. I was teaching a course also, a graduate course in the community at that time. And so I was able to sh show parts of what I've written to community mem to students in the, in the course, many of them from the community. And I asked what they thought about me writing, my interpretation of the situation, how they thought of, uh, of me presenting it, uh, giving it uh, to a large audience. They were very supportive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I, I found that was what, one of the ways in which we should do it. And I think researchers have a responsibility, not only to just research, say thanks very much and go about your business, but return sometimes to say, listen, did I get this right? Or uh, is, is there a different interpretation you would make? And sometimes we can put these parallel uh, interpretations out, out, out there to the audience for them to see that, you know, uh, we are all informed by an experience that's very different. But thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for doing this.